the fact that it is 64 degrees Fahrenheit here in Chicago and I'm excited about it is a problem. I love the heat. I like it to be hot. But let me tell you, the past few days, the heat index has been like 100 to 110 here for like three days straight. And I don't know about you, but working with wool in that heat, baby, it's a no. <laughs> I'm surprised I got anything worked on and done. It's hot. I'm not complaining because I don't want it to be cold. But it's hard to do your craft when it's that hot. <laughs> Let's get into it. Take 43. What's good, peacemakers? Welcome back to another episode of the Peace for Peace Crafting Podcast. I'm Michael, and this is my yarny corner of the YouTube universe. If you would like to find me on any other social media, you can do so over on Instagram as Peace for Peace Crafting, uh, Ravelry at Peace for Peace Craft, or if you like music, you can follow the Peace for Peace Crafting playlist, podcast playlist. Peace for Peace Crafting Podcast Playlist over on Spotify. I am going to uh, start putting more music in there again. I kind of took a break because I was trying to figure some things out. Anyway, we can talk about that later on. Um, yeah, those are all the places you can find me. If this is your first time checking me out, welcome. I hope you enjoy. If you do, you can do all that fun YouTube stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, share with a friend. We want to build this little peacemaker community. And if you are returning, you already know. You are the true MVPs. <laughs> Thank you for coming back to enjoy some of this hot mess. How has everyone been? <laughs> Good, I hope. It's been a wild two weeks. Yeah, it's nice to be back on schedule. Um, for me, school is out for the summer. Woo! If school is not out where you are, um, I'm sorry. Hopefully it'll be soon. Uh, we had our last day. I couldn't believe I had to like go <laughs> to the school and teach. I was like, you all want programming like next to the last day of school, why? Um, but it's all good. The kids had a good time and we did some fun dance along stuff and they loved it. Uh, yeah, so like school's out. So like I'm not done with work, but like it's definitely a quieter time for a little bit before we get into summer programming and things start, ramp start ramping up again. Not as much as it is during the school year, but like summers are definitely busy for me. Um, what else? What else have I been doing? It's been so busy, I literally can't remember anything. Oh, uh, where I work, I had some friends who I used to dance with. Um, they are retired. And when we say retired, like in the performing arts, uh, well, let me speak to dance specifically. I don't know about like theater, musical theater, all that jazz, but I assume it's the same. Um, we just mean from performing. So they're retiring from performing, so they're gonna be stepping off of the stage after, I think both of, actually a few of the ones that I danced with danced for a 19 years uh, professionally. Um, so I got to go see their last performances, which was really, um, joyful and sad and um, exciting. It was definitely all the things, lots of crying, happy tears. So I'm a little bit sad to like see them uh, leaving the stage, but excited for all their new adventures. Um, so that was fun-ish. Uh, definitely kept me busy last weekend. And 
something else I wanted to bring up, but now I can't remember. So yeah, it's been busy for me, just like finishing up school, sending off some of my friends, uh, getting a little crafting done when I can. Yeah, it's been really exciting. Uh, other than that, it's been hot, like I said, and I love it. I would much rather be hot than cold. Um, I live very close to the beach. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know that last summer this sort of started, but it was it was later in the summer where like my roommates and I, we'd wake up, well, at our normal time. <laughs> we'd wake up early and make coffee and take a little walk over to the beach and spend, I don't know, 15 to 30, sometimes 45 if it was on the weekend and we didn't have anything to do. Uh, just like going and jumping in the lake and playing around and then just like sitting, watching the sun come up some more. Granted, by the time we're getting up, um, the sun, I mean, it's, it's not like we're watching the sun come up, but it's definitely <laughs> up at seven um, by the, you know, seven, seven thirty when we're walking over there. Um, and so I was, I would post my, on my Instagram, sorry, this is a really random long story. I posted my Instagram, like us, just like the view of the beach or whatever. And so we said, oh, this year we want to start earlier. And so it's been hot. <laughs> we started earlier. So I think at the beginning of this week, so today's the 18th, June 18th. And the beginning of the week, maybe Monday, started the like warming up. And yeah, it's been so nice just like getting up in the morning, walking over, taking a little dip. The lake still is a little bit cold. Mm. It was like 55 when we started and now it's, I checked this morning when I went and it's 62. So it's definitely warming up. And it was, <clears throat> excuse me, today is 64 Fahrenheit here for us. Um, so it was nice that like the water and the outside air were the same, but the past couple of days when it was like the heat index was at like 105, like the water was cool. It was amazing to jump in it and then you just stand up and it's like the hot breeze felt so nice. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but it was amazing. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to continue doing that if it's not raining. Um, cause it's such a wonderful way to just like wake up and start the day. It brings me joy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Other than that, I mean, things have been kind of busy around here today. I'm recording this a little bit later than I had originally anticipated. Plant stuff. There's like a, not a festival, but like we have these concrete sort of benches near where I live along the lake. And every year they paint them white and then have different artists, community organizations, I believe, come and they section them off and everyone like paints a mural. So we get like a new um, sort of mural seating area along the lake by me. So that's happening this weekend. So I'm hoping tomorrow I can go over and check that out. There's like music and stuff. Um, they set up a little stage, it's cute. Uh, nothing like huge, you know what I mean? It's just it's like a little neighborhood jam out, if you will. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, so I have that going on, which will be fun, and hopefully I'll get to like chill by the beach some more. Also too, um, and I'll talk about it now, Denise Bidon is having a wave of change jacket summer knit along. So I help moderate those. Um, gatherings that usually happen on Sundays if you would like to join I think we have two more weeks so tomorrow and then the following week you do not have to finish by the time that our time together is <laughs> is over but it does give everyone a chance to sit around I think the the pattern is originally written for a bulky weight and so everyone's knitting it in like a linen or cotton uh fiber, yarn, um, just so they have a little summer cover-up. It's been really fun. So I'll, I'll, I also have that tomorrow too. So join in, follow her over on Instagram. All the details for all that stuff are over there, not <laughs> here. Uh, yeah, anyway, all right, that's what's going on in my world. Uh, let's get into some makes 
anything that I talk about uh, moving forward will be linked down below. So yarn, patterns, all that fun, good stuff. If I don't link something, please just like leave me a comment because um, I'm human, it happens. <laughs> I forget things sometimes. Uh, and I can just let you know what it was I was talking about because let's be honest, I'll probably forget something. So let's get into it. All right, I'm gonna start with a little bit of spinning. So last time I showed you all um, some stuff that I'd already spun up from um, the Wolfine advent that I'd gotten. Let me just make sure that I don't confuse these. Okay, this is 11. And uh, I, I'm doing a three ply with them with all the little, what are they called? Different days of the advent. Oh my God, what are you doing? Um, so one of them was already done up and I was just waiting to wind it. And so I'd started spinning up the last of the odd numbers. So there are 12 different um, mini colors and then one full braid um, that came with the kit, with the kit, with the advent. And so I spun up all the odds first because they're all going to be a three ply with this lighter color. So the rest of this that I spun up of this just like gray wool is going to go with half of my full braid. So I split, I did this. I, I'll talk about that in a minute. So first off, here's the, <laughs> here's the one that I showed that was just waiting to be washed. What? So this is beautiful. I wrote it down. This one is um, a three ply and it's approximately 200 and what does that say? 14 yards to this. I didn't weigh it. Oh, no, I did. Most of the, the like, add like smaller days are about an ounce. So I think this was like nine something or 0.9 something, you know what I mean? So it's got some really fun browns and blues. Sorry, there's some weird shadows coming in here. Yeah, yellows, browns, blues, maybe it's not yellow, it's more of a like chartreuse -y color. So I love this skein, really pretty. Um, and I gotta say that, and I think I've said this before, like now that I've, it's been a little bit over a year since I started spinning. Um, I do notice that like I'm becoming a little bit more consistent with the like type of yarn that I want to spin. I don't have one of those little gauge things where you can like put the yarn in, make sure it's the same size or whatever the whole time. Eventually I'm gonna get one and I've talked about this before too. I'm just trying to like really work on getting a feel for like what's going on Can I make it without? Using one of those tools and like doing some of the other Like more not advanced, but just like having a card making sure you're look, I'm just, uh, Right now I don't have the time for that <laughs> Not in a bad way. It's just like I don't have the time for that um, And everything's coming out sort of similar anyway, so it's fine. I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. So that was one. And then the second one <clears throat> that I finished was my day 11. So this, like I said, was the last of my odds. And here's what that skein looks like. So it's giving you browns and this fun little like tealy blue and some purples in there. Yeah, this one's really dope too. And it's so fluffy. Uh, this one ended up being, um, 234 yards so it's a little bit more than the other one that's okay I think I'm keeping a little book which I don't have in here with me right now do I no I don't it should be in this bag um, but it's not whoopsies uh, <laughs> all of them are around the same amount of yardage and it's totally fine I think for the projects that I want to use it for I actually don't think I've talked about that on here. So I'm hoping that once this whole advent is spun up, um, like I said, it's my year long project that I wanna do the 
oh, is it, I think it's called the Brioche Adventure Wrap. I'll pop in a picture right here if that's what it's called. Or, yeah, I'll pop in a picture here. Um, by John, Jonathan Tallow, I believe is his name. And I know a few other people are doing this too. I think Ray from Needles at the Ready is doing one. Nancy from Trilogy Yarns, I believe, is doing one. Or did one. Anyway, it's a really dope wrap. Brioche. Um, and I thought it'd be cool if I knit one up in my hand spun with this advent. I thought that'd be a really neat idea. So this was my second one. And so now I'm going to, um, because I had that gray left over that I showed, I'm going to spin up half of the full braid, the four ounce braid. And I have already sectioned it off. So it, Again, this is living uh, in my scrappy angel bag with my with the peacocks on it, um, and my little Max pin spinning. And this I don't remember where I got this. I think I won it at something, but it's a gay sheep, and I like it. <laughs> um, so all my spinning stuff lives in this bag. Then it can sit by my wheel. I can move it around. So here's. I'll just pull out two of them. Um, oh no. What that fiber looks like. So I've made little balls of them. Nests, if you will. Uh, so these are kind of wild. There's reds, oranges, pinks, some green, brown. It's like kind of all the colors that are in the minis are in, are in these guys. And so these are just two. So I'll spin two up and put it with the gray and then all the gray will be done. Then I can move into the even number days. Yeah, that's right, the even number days. And those are all gonna be spun up with a darker colored look, so a dark gray fiber. Um, with this, so it was a four ounce braid and all I did, so if my hands are the braid, all I did was I opened it up um, so that it was a little more flat and then I split it in two and then I split those two, psh, in two. So then that gave me four. So I can spin up these two with one, these two with the other, <laughs> ding, those two with the other, and yeah, just keep going from there. I'm enjoying that it's just kind of taking me a while, you know? Like, I'm not in a rush to get this done. Um, it's just like on days where you know, maybe I get home or because it's been really hot. Like, I don't want to sit and just, like, knit something because it's hot out. Like, yes, we have the AC on in the house, but, like, I don't know. It's just, like, a vibe. Like, if you've been out in the sun, you all know, if you've been out in the sun for a while, it kind of, like, zaps the energy out of you. And sometimes, for me at least, like, sitting and knitting, I kind of can't concentrate a little bit because it's always like, I'm so hot, I can't be bothered. So just sitting and spinning is really great because I can just like focus on that, which has been really lovely. Okay, I was trying to zip that bag. That's not gonna happen. Let's move right along. Uh, so that's all my spinning stuff. Really enjoying it. Let's talk about some other FOs. Actually, before I do that, Another thing that I've been doing, and I've, I've talked about this a little bit on here too, is like, we've been doing a lot of plant stuff around the house. So like, taking care of the things that are in, indoors. We have some stuff that's outside too, like on, we have a like shared porch, where we have like flowers and all sorts of stuff. We tried to grow some vegetables and stuff out there, I think. Yeah, pretty sure we did. <laughs> I can't remember now. Anyway, I like sort of deal with those, my jam is the ones that are in the house. So we had, um, I'll put a picture here of what like a proper one looks like, but we had this alocasia, right? Here's a little plant talk for you. And I don't know, sometime last year, it just like was like, I'm done putting off leaves. I'm not giving, I'm just like, I'm over it. Like, no, it's a no for me. And I thought it was like in the spot that I had it and it was just like very unhappy. And so it said, peace out. So I just kind of like left it and didn't do anything with it. 
for a couple months, maybe. <laughs> I think actually I moved it on to, we have like an enclosed portion of our porch and I just stuck it out there. I was like, I'm gonna leave it out there. It, it can be mad out there. And so then in looking up things here at the University of YouTube, I learned that like those plants can go dormant in the like cooler months, which I didn't know that. Um, and so I saw some people like taking them out of the dirt and like peeling off the, just like where the foliage had been. Cause you know, they, it like keeps piling on top of each other, peeling it off. And there's these little bulbs. They're called something else. I don't know what they're called though. So I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna do that with mine. And I'm gonna workshop like re, growing it, <laughs> bringing it back to life, whatever. Um, so I had this little thing that I bought at Target actually. And I think I've talked about this before. Oh, can you see those? I talked about this before. Like I've been um, using LECA for some of my plants and the ones that are living in that are like thriving. We had a Monstera that it's a little bit wild and I chopped it up. I took like three cuttings from it and it's been, so that was in March, April, May. So it's been about two and a half months and all three of the cuttings have rooted in there and one put off a new leaf. Another one is about to put off a leaf and the third one is figuring out its life. It has roots, so I'm just gonna like let it be. Anyway, back to this bad boy. So I put these little like bul bulbs in the LECA and then this was probably about two months ago too. And then over the last week, y'all, can you even? Okay, first of all, love her face. She's like about to have a new do, but it, it, it has a new little leaf coming out. So I'm super excited about this. I'm gonna like empty this out and like rinse off the little pebbles that it's in and stick it back in here. I'm trying to be really gentle. Actually, if I, there's another one in there. It's, it's just taking a little bit more time and we're gonna let it do its thing. But it is green now and it looks like it's gonna start pushing something out soon. So I'm really happy about that. But like, I had to show this because I saw it this morning when I walked past our dining room and I was like, I can't even with that. <sighs> Good times. Anyway, if you are not a plant person, um, I don't, where am I gonna put this now? Oh, back where I, where I got it from. Uh, I believe that you are. <laughs> and I know some people are like, I kill everything. I can't do it. I just feel like a lot of the plants that we have, like they, they let you know when they need to be watered. If you just like check in on them, see what's going on. Yeah, it's been so nice, love it. Okay, enough plant talk. Shall we get back into some more yarny goodness? All right, so last time I showed you all my um, Wonderland, Wonderland socks that I was making and those are now done. What? Um, these are the Wonderland socks by, uh, I can't remember anyone's name today. By Matt Akers. I know, I heard some of you yelling. I heard you. Um, and they're awesome. They're a beautiful pattern. You can kind of see, I'm trying to figure out how, if I just keep still. There's like little diamonds that form along the top of the sock. Here, I'll take one off. And I love it. I think it's really cute, fun little pattern sock. Is that better? You can sort of see. I think because of the, the tonal yarn, it's a little bit harder to pick them up, but I don't care. <laughs> I think they look really awesome. So these were knit out of, uh, the main color is uh, yarn that Kevin from Needles at the Ready dyed. And this was an 80-20, so I was wrong in the last episode. Uh, it's an 80-20, it's 400 yards, 400 grams, and this was old number seven is the colorway name. 
And then the gray is just some, um, it says 7525 Patton's Croy, uh, just like gray that I had. So it's darker, um, but I love it. And in the pattern, it says that you should like, so like this main color should also be the the cuff, but I was a little bit worried, not worried, I was a little bit worried that I wouldn't have enough yarn just because it's a pattern sock and I was like, I don't want to get almost to the end and be playing some sort of yarn chicken, even though I know that like 100 grams can definitely get me, I must, I wear a um, US 10 or what is that? I think a 43 in Euro sizing. Um, I know I can get a pair of socks out of 100 grams, if, even if I if I do the whole thing in, in that color or if I just do heels and toes in a contrast color, whatever. I personally love the way that the heels, toes, and cuffs all match and then this is one solid color. It's a vibe. I love it. The yarn is wonderful to work with. Um, I love the tonality of it. It's really pretty. And yeah, it's giving me honeycomb vibes and I love that. Shout out to the beehive. Shout out to the beehive. If you know, you know. <laughs> We're excited. Um, so left over from that, I have um, just this of each. So this was a 50 gram ball and I have 13 grams left over of this one. And this was 100 grams and I have 32 grams left over. So, I mean, like plenty to do the heels and toes if I wanted, but it's all good. Now I have a little bit left that will go into being something else at some point. So those are my socks. Really excited about it. I need to cast on another pair. Um, I just, like, I was, so these two was that true yeah these two are all sock yarn and i was i like came in here the other day and i was like okay like those have been done for a week what are you gonna do and i just like couldn't figure anything out so then this morning before i actually started recording this i was just looking and i think this i can just take it down this hank um, that I tie-dyed with my roommates, when was that? Like over the beginning of the year. Yeah, it was like over the, the winter holidays. Um, I think I'm gonna knit this up because uh, I've never knit from a sock blank before and I just wanna see what this looks like. So, oh, here I can unravel it and show you all. So here's, the fun tie-dyed goodness. I like put rubber bands on certain spots and then basically uh, while we were tie-dyeing other things, I used it as the cleanup towel. So whenever there'd be like a spill or something, I would just like grab this and like clean up the area with it. So there's no real rhyme or reason to it. I was just like, let's have some fun and see what happens. So what I think I'm gonna do with this before I start um, knitting from it is I think I'm gonna actually unwind the whole thing because my roommate said that there were a, there was a little bit of dye left in it and I'm gonna wash it first let it dry and then wind it up into two 50 gram balls and then just knit it from there and that those socks will just will only be this so we'll see how that goes but I'm excited actually I'm glad I pulled it down because now that I'm now that means I have to use it, or not. When I turn this off, I could put it back and you would never know until the next episode when I'm showing you socks and it's not that. <laughs> All right, next thing, one more FO, this is like an FO parade today, is y'all, I finished, how am I gonna show this? Let's open it up first my wave of change shawl slash blanket. I made the shawl 
And this is a pattern by Denise Bidon. And here we go. What? So it's a big square, <laughs> as you can see. Um, I'm trying to hold it up so you can see it as much as, as you can. Um, I'm obsessed. Like when I was binding it off, I was on the bus actually. Why I was doing it on the bus? I mean, that was the part of the pattern I was at and I was coming home and I was just like, <laughs> time to bind this baby off. Um, the pattern is written in one color. Uh, if this is your first time hearing about this, let me explain a little bit. The pattern is written in one color and I had these two, um, shucks, they're, okay, start over. I use Cascade 220 for these. I don't have the ball bands in here, but there's some numbers. 85932-77143. I just made those up, please don't go looking for those. <laughs> if you look at a previous episode though, I definitely say it in there. Um, I wanted to stripe it. I had these two colors in my stash and they were gonna be for sweaters. I decided I didn't want to make those sweaters at this time with this yarn. Um, this is more sport weighty-ish, and I had a bunch of skeins of these. So I just started winding them up, and I think I had nine of the gray and eight of the blue-ish color. I have three of each left, um, so whatever that math is. Six of one and five of the other, yeah. So I striped the whole way. The pattern is also written where you like stop after a certain number of doing the, let me, if I pull it closer, doing the little pearl ridges. And I'm a little bit bigger than um, Denise and height wise. And so I wanted to expand it a little bit. So I ended up doing um, 18 of the stripes until I got to the bind off. So it was 19 altogether, which I was kind of thinking I should have done like 21. I don't know why. I just thought 21 sounded nice. <laughs> so it's a, it's a square, but you fold it in half like I've done here. So it makes a little point. So now it's like double the thickness and I'm gonna try not to hit this mic too much. And then you can just tuck those ends in. Ah, oh, imagine a coat over this. Honey, I'm like ready for the winter. I love it. I think the colors look really dope together. It's giving me low contrast. It's giving me just everything I wanted it to be. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the shawl version. Now this, because I did make it bigger, although um, if you did just follow the pattern, like what it says, um, this size with this yarn could definitely be a, a baby blanket as well. And in the pattern, there's like ways for you to use different weights of yarn. You know, you could make it a bedspread if you wanted to, or um, there were a couple people when we were doing this in along who just did it with one skein of sock yarn and made like a little kerchief, which was like so cute, living for that. Um, yeah, so like I'm gonna use mine as a shawl or because it's warm out now, um, I was thinking about even, even, she has it in the pattern too, where you can like put a little backing on it and uh, hang it as like a wall hanging. And I thought that might be really dope for a little bit, just like displaying it and putting it up on the wall um, just to hang out. I mean, some of you have definitely said like, oh, you should <laughs> like, there's space here. There's some space over here. You should like display the shawls that you make like in the background. And I'm, sh my roommates would not care one bit. They'd be like, okay, cool. Like, we love that. They're beautiful. Like, show them off. Um, so we'll think about it. Anyway, love this. So happy that it's done. Like, I was beaming last night when I 
um, like soaked it and <laughs> put it on the blocking mats. I actually wove in my ends before I soaked it because what? Um, this yarn is, um, so it's Cascade 220 and it's 100% uh, Peruvian Highland wool or something. And I love it. It's super soft. It feels incredible. It's so hot here that after I blocked it, I rolled it in three towels, stepped on it, laid it out, and it was, you all, I wish I was joking, it was dry in like two hours. It's hot. Um, and since it's 100 degrees and this is a shawl, this is gonna now go um, either on my wall or in a bin somewhere. So that concludes the uh, finished objects portion. And I have two other, I have two sweaters that I'm working on right now. Well, one, if I'm being honest, has just been chilling. And that is my once in floral. The shawl that I just finished used the same needles and I was just having too much fun with the shawl that I just kind of like left that one, let it be. So I'm gonna put those needles back onto that project and get back to it because I really want that sweater. Um, so hopefully in the next episode, you all will definitely see some progress that has been made on that. And my other sweater, I think I just, I was like in finish mode. I don't know if anyone else gets like this, like I have a few projects going and once a couple are like near the end, I'm just like, I'm gonna power through. This is the only thing I'm gonna work on. I'm not touching anything else, get out of my life. So I'll get back to those. But, but with that said, I did start something else. And I just needed, here, let me put this here. I needed to switch it up a little bit. And so, here's what I'm making. So I got this 10th anniversary issue of Pom Pom Magazine. It's really cool. It's like double-sided. So one side is one cover, one side is the other cover. and. I'm sure if you watch a bunch of other podcasters, they've talked about this issue before. There's some really cool patterns in here. Um, and if I'm being honest, there's a few of them that I'm gonna make, which I say that about all the pom-poms. Maybe not the last one. The last one is giving me a lot of like mohair, very frilly things and like, that's not my vibe, but I do live with someone that that is their vibe. <laughs> so I wanna make some things in there, like not for myself, but for her. So anyway, when I saw the cover of this, I was like, okay, first of all, what is that? And second of all, when am I gonna make it? So this is, let me just take this out for a second. So this is a crochet pattern and let me find the photos that are in here for it okay here's oh, wait i don't want to lose the pattern page okay so here is the the photos that are on here so it's called the florabunda i hope i'm pronouncing that right and it's a pattern by Gina Fama Rockenwanger. Fingers crossed that's correct. We're gonna call them Gina for right now. And it's a really cool, oh, here's a nice picture of it too. Um, just like crocheted top. <laughs> and if I'm being 100, like we go thrifting, like we'll go to like some of the thrift stores that are around here or just like to pass the time, we just go like window shopping or whatever. And I've definitely seen, we've definitely seen like crochet tops. And I'm always like, yeah, that's cute, but. And so like my roommate never buys anything. But I saw this and I was like, I have to make this. So this pattern is, uh, uses uh, linen. Wait, is that true? Sorry, I'm looking at the yarn. I'm looking at the yarn. Yes, so the pattern is written for 100% linen. 
I'm using, I don't even know where to start. Okay, I'll start here. First of all, I'm using, okay. <laughs> Get your life together. So I swatched for it, right? I've only crocheted, what is that? let me make sure this is true. I've only crocheted one other garment. A lot of the things I crochet are like quick. Hats, booties, scarves. Mostly those types of things. Lots of hats. Um, so I was like, oh, you should probably, oh, baby blankets. Oh my gosh, afghans. Right, anyway. I was like, this is going to be a garment. You should probably swatch for it because you want it to fit. <laughs> so here's my janky swatch. And what I did was um, I just did the number of rows that it said to do. But the top, you can tell, is a little bit, um, here, maybe if I hold it up against my black shirt, uh, is smaller. And then it flares out at the bottom. So I used the recommended hook size here, which was a C. Yeah, a C hook. And then down here, I used a D. Washed it, let it dry. I had to use the D, which I think is a 3.25 millimeter. Someone correct me. I'm using a D hook, which is the smallest hook I've ever had to use in the things that I've made. Um, because... The yarn that I'm using is, so all of this is Knit Picks Lindy Chain, and it's a fingering weight, excuse me, so first time doing that, fingering weight sweater, and it's, um, uh, so the Lindy Chain is 180 yards for 50 grams, and it's 70% linen, 30% Pima cotton. Okay, here are the colors that I'm using. And then I'll show you the little bit that I've done with it. So, linen, right, giving you neutral, we love. All these are wound up with the tags behind them because I did not want to lose them. This one, the color is Whisper. So this like lavender purple color. Then we have turmeric, so like a, I don't know, a turmeric color. <laughs> I'm just gonna try and give another descriptor, but it's literally called turmeric, boo. Uh, this one is harbor, so more greeny color. And the last color is conch. So this like, that's kind of bright, it's not, Whatever that is, it's not that. Um, but it's like a corally peaches color. So if I hold them all up together, it's five different colors. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Oh. We're getting this vibe, right? Sort of similar to what it is in the actual book. I just like played around with the colors a little bit. Um, and depending on what nitpicks had to offer so i started was it yesterday let's say i started on friday oh no that would be yesterday okay so i think i started thursday thursday night i was like let me just get a feel for what the pattern is so there's okay so you start and this isn't giving anything away you start by making these little granny squares. Okay, so there's four of each. Now I'm only gonna hold up two so I can show. So you make these little granny squares. Here's one. Oh my God, I love it. And here's the second one. And from these little nuggets, it's gonna build out somehow, some way. Um, to form the rest of the sweater. <laughs> I haven't read too, too far ahead, um, but I did read the next section. Like once I finished the granny, I was like, oh, granny squares, let's do this. Love that, we can knock those out real quick. And what I've been doing is just like a chain. So I read the two sections for the two different um, 
my color variations and then I did all the middles for all eight then I did all the next thing for all eight then I did the next round all of them last little thing to make it a square for all of them um honestly, just because I didn't want to do like four and like finish four of them and then have to go back and start at the beginning to do the other four no we're not doing that no ma'am not no 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 just do all four of them and get them out the way so now because i did read ahead we're gonna start shaping to do like one side and i will have to go and do like one and one because that's the way that it's written in the pattern so these will end up being um one on each side in the front one on each side in the back and then each sleeve gets one that's why you make four of each color so yeah one and one one and one one and one on each sleeve so that's super fun. I'm enjoying, um, one, crocheting again, because I feel like I don't do it as much as I was when I wasn't knitting. So like, what is that, three, four years ago? I was like, three, four years ago back, I was like, crochet, 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 crochet. And then like three or four years ago, I got back into knitting and I was like, whoa, okay this is the vibe let's get into it um so first time like crocheting which i would say is like for me personally is like a more intermediate advanced pattern just because it seems like it's a lot um love how quickly these worked up and it's my first time using a linen cotton blend or just using linen or cotton, period. I don't think I've ever made anything just using those fibers. So this is really neat. The swatch after I washed it was really light. It felt really beautiful. And so I can't wait for the whole sweater to be done. I think it'll be a really nice garment for my roomie for the summer slash fall. You know, you throw in like a, another shirt underneath or a tank top or something and just be out in the world and it's really colorful it's bright i think it's a good time <laughs> so that's that really enjoying working on it and yeah hopefully i'll get some more worked on on it um now that things are going to be a little bit more quiet for me slightly before the summer our summer programs pick up so i'm hoping to bang that out or most of it by the end of the month so i have like two weeks not that i'm on a deadline or anything it's just like it works out pretty quick. Although using that small hook, which is also the first time I've used that small of a hook, I'm like, ooh, these are some tiny little stitches. I'm used to like, you know, making those big loops and I'm, I really have to focus <laughs> so that I'm getting both of the, the loops while I'm doing the project. So that's that. Quickly before I let you all go, I want to bring back, which I've missed a couple times, uh, my music recommendations. I know that Spotify does not allow you to have collaborative playlists anymore, but I thought this was something that I liked doing on the podcast, and so I'm just going to continue doing it. And I will drop the songs that I recommend over in that playlist. If you don't have Spotify, feel free to use whatever service you're using or just go on YouTube. Um, if you're already there, uh, <laughs> to check out the songs if you can find them there. Um, and if anyone does follow the playlist and they would like something added because it's not collaborative anymore, if you're all over on Insta and we follow each other, like send me a message, say, hey, could you add these? I think that might be fun for the group. And I, I'll just go in and I'll dump them in there. Or the same thing here, like leave it in the comments. Oh, you should put some whatever on there. I can totally do that. So, you all, there's so much great music coming out this year. Like, I'm a little bit freaking out. It's just like, it's all too much. I'm loving it. It's great. So, the last time I recommended something, it was from this artist. And now the album is released and I want to talk about it. So, my music rec for this week is the newest Florence and the Machine album called Dance Fever. Uh... First of all, this cover, she looks like the coolest witch, and I love it. <laughs> and the inside, too. Wait, let me make sure I'm doing it the right way. The inside cover. Ah! I just want to... Oh, 
I just want to be wherever she is. Uh, it's great. So this album's really fun. Uh, I have a few songs I would like to recommend. So Free, which is the song that I recommended before. If you're feeling any bit of anxious or a little bit down, that song for me pumps me up. And I feel like this, I think the song is to, I know in the, the music video, like it just talks about like her anxiety getting her down. But when she's dancing, she feels free. We love that. Um, so like put it on Dance Around Your Kitchen. So free, I would recommend. Um, Heaven Is Here is a jam. It's short. Um, and what will my third one be? Oh, there's so many good ones to choose from. Okay, I'll pick two more. So Free, Heaven Is Here, Daffodil, and Morning Elvis. Those are my four. Oh my gosh, and just lounging on the back? Oh, get out of here. Uh, so I will drop those over in the Spotify playlist for you all who follow over there to go and check out. If not, oh, you know what? Maybe I'll link the music videos to Free and Heaven Is Here down below. And you can just check them out there. And then you're also getting the visual for it. Um, yeah, do people still watch music videos anymore? Like, I grew up in a time where, like, that was the thing. And I think it's really, and I'm also a visual person. Obviously I was in performing arts. So like, I like to see the visual if there is one for the music that's being created. I still love it. My roommates are like, oh, what video? I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys pull it together. Uh, so I'll link those two down below um, for you all to check out. And yeah, I think that's it for this time around. I thought that this was gonna be shorter and I'm looking at the time ticking away and clearly it is not. It was so lovely uh, hanging out with you all. Um, it's been a crazy two weeks and I hope that the following two weeks are happy and chill for all of you. Tomorrow's Juneteenth. It's also Father's Day, I believe. Um, so hopefully there's some uh, celebrating going on and I know that when we do like any sort of holiday really um, it's not always a joyous time for everyone for some folks it can be a more difficult time so remember to reach out to those people who you think might need a little extra love on those days um, yeah because it doesn't cost you anything and it's a wonderful thing to do so reach out to folks um, celebrate those that you want to celebrate <laughs> and um yeah have a chill two weeks and until i see you next time make a peace spread some peace peace